everyone welcome to the robert show today we are unlocking a practical blueprint for ai ready data modernization with richard danley svp global partners at informatica uh, we'll get into what's broken in legacy stacks how partner accelerator cut costs and uh, risk and real outcomes from the field but uh, let's first welcome richard richard it's your debut on the robert show super excited to chat with you and uh, definitely learn more about what's happening in the partner world but uh, in general as well learn a little bit about ai ready data modernization with you hey thanks so much for having me on uh, ravi i'm a huge fan of the show by the way and um, uh, anybody listening i definitely recommend hit subscribe as i've done and get all the latest and the greatest it's nice. helped me to be more informed and uh, yeah totally recommend it Richard, it is just you guys that make my show easier and valuable. So uh, that is what I'm excited about. Uh, but just for audience, would you like to quickly also introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Informatica. Just a little bit about your roles and responsibility. Oh yeah, happy to, Ravi. So I um, I've been at Informatica for 20 years, which is a long time. Wow. I spent 10 of those years in EMEA. I used to run our EMEA business. And about 10 years ago, when Informatica went private, I moved to Silicon Valley. Uh, I've been based there for 10 years, and I was part of the transformation of the company. My current role, I run Global Partners. And at Informatica, partners are incredibly important to us because every year, around about 35% of our business is sourced by partners. So they recommend wow. us and bring us in. And then... Close to 90% of the business that we do, we're working hand in hand with partners. So we're extremely partner friendly and it's my honor and privilege to run the partner team. That's awesome. 35% uh, of the business you said are sourced by the partners. It is massive for sure. And a massive responsibility to uh, you know, be owning and at the same time, 20 years that you've spent. So that's a long time. Um, so amazing, uh, good background, uh, Richard, uh, to kick things off, uh, let's start with the big picture. Many organizations are still running on legacy data management systems. And in today's landscape with the incredible push towards AI and data driven decision making, do you feel that modernizing these systems have shifted from a nice to have IT project to an urgent priority? What have you been seeing in this space? Kind of curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, great question, Ravit. Uh, do you know, I, I start with the big picture, first of all. You know, I think everybody knows that as we look at what's going on in the news, enormous, enormous amounts of money are being spent building data centers. It's one of the biggest capital investments we've ever seen in, in history. And, you know, we know it's going to be fundamentally a game changer for business and, and for life. But the key, the, a couple of key words there, you know, data center, the key thing is getting the data into the center to be able to leverage AI. And I feel like it's become urgent for companies to now modernize and move to the cloud. But I really mm. feel like people are slow in doing, or have been slow in doing that, but they're now coming around to the realization that AI is going to require good data and it's going to need to be in the cloud. So people are starting now to get around to modernizing. But there's a ton of work to do because you know, if you think of any large company, you know, any large company in their industry, they typically at some time bought a competitor and that competitor in turn has probably rolled up many companies and so on and so forth. So you end up almost in any large company with a museum of technology, pockets of old technologies running on premise, which are expensive to run. They, they take up more time and resources that should be devoted to AI use cases. So I think people, it's all, you know, you know, uh, if you run an old car, Ravit, you come to a point at some time where it's just costing you too much money and, and you've got to change it. And I think people are kind of at that point now with their legacy systems. They need to yep. be moved to the cloud, they search and yeah, no, uh, I think I, I think Richard, you mentioned some interesting points here. And uh just gonna stick to something on the lines where uh you know, with the world where we are in, in AI kind of, you know, obviously plays a very important role. Uh, but as you said, now we've come to a realization where 
you know, enterprise leaders have started understanding that without good data, uh, AI might not give you the results that you're, you're expecting. But when we talk about, you know, results, there are uh, challenges as well. So what are the biggest data challenges you see organizations contending today to drive their AI initiatives? That is like uh, something I'm kind of curious to know. I'm pretty sure my audience would love to know a little bit as well. Yeah, totally. So I, I'd say, first of all, just to give a sense of the scale of what we're talking about, you know, still more than 50% of workloads are running on premise. So, you know, maybe they don't all need to move to cloud, but perhaps 30 or 40% of those do. So there's, there's a ton of work to do. And then if you think about other ways, um, I think people have typically put the technology before the data and it's, it's resulted in disappointing outcomes for the business. You know, people built data warehouses and put data into them that wasn't clean and they didn't get a business outcome that they wanted. You know, they uh -huh. built data lakes that turned into swamps and it kind of polluted them and ruined the investment. People didn't get the, the outcome again. And we've seen people yeah. often putting the cloud before the data, you know, not thinking through the strategy for the data and then moving everything to the cloud and not getting a, a business outcome. In previous cycles, that was a pity. It was unfortunate. People didn't get a, a good outcome. But I think it's different this time. If people don't think very, very carefully through their data strategy and they don't clean the data, mm -hmm. they don't govern, govern it, they don't secure it, the, the outcomes will be worse than disappointing. It'll be catastrophic because it was always a bad idea to give poor data to people working in a business, but to give poor quality data to agents, those agents are going to make decisions based on that poor quality data, which are going to proliferate and, you know, they're going to result in catastrophic outcomes. So I think one lesson from for this wave, I think that we're going to see is the stakes are a lot higher. You know, it, it yep. really yep. is imperative that people have a very well thought through strategy. And I, I'd encourage anybody to be working with one of our partners on that strategy and planning now for exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard, that is something pretty uh, helpful. Uh, I'm kind of also wanting to learn a little bit about, you know, the partner accelerators. Uh, and, you know, I know you all work with a lot of partners. So can you give us an example of how Informatica is working with partners to accelerate modernization? If you can share any example that you might have or any thoughts around that. Yes, um, we're very, very lucky. We have nine GSIs globally, and all of them are in our huge. modernization program. That's huge. They're, they're incredible. Uh, they do such a good job for our customers. And we've many boutique partners also in the program. So altogether, we have 50 partners around the world who are helping our customers to modernize um, mostly Informatica's legacy products, so Power Center mm -hmm. and MDM. But also, um, we're starting to see partners now building solutions to modernize um, non-Informatica legacy. So again, people we would have competed with a decade ago, two decades ago, and these old systems are running. And one I'll call out in particular, the first partner of ours to build a, an accelerator, a kind of factory approach, is LTI Mindtree. Uh, they built okay. something called Project IRX which is basically an accelerator to take non-informatica legacy um, products and to help them modernize those to the cloud. So they've done a great job. They've um, found about nice. 60, 70 percent automation. So, you know, a great way to do it cost effectively. So, yeah, they're, they're probably one I would certainly call out. That's fantastic. And that's uh, definitely a huge one when it comes to 60 to 70 percent of automation that they've done already, uh, which I'm pretty sure goes down to, you know, the lower costs and faster timelines as well. So uh, great stuff there. Uh, Richard, another uh, quick question, because we are since on, we are on this topic. Uh, uh, of quantifiable outcomes. Uh, can you share some customer stories that you have in mind or what you've been hearing uh, and you all might have like a lot of joint customers too. So who has actually gone through this journey and what specific benefits they have realized? Uh, happy to, you know, kind of learn a little bit about that. Yeah, I'll call out um, 
I can't name them, but a very large healthcare provider in the US. They worked with LTI Mindtree with their project Hirex Accelerator, and they got around 70% automation, which for them uh, drastically nice. reduced their costs. So what they're able to do is really save themselves all the time and money they were spending on a legacy on-premise solution, which had really come to the end of its roadmap. You know, there was no further investment in the product. It was costing them a lot of time. The uh, maintenance costs had gone up. So it really was time to free up that investment, uh, modernize, and have those resources available for AI use cases. And that's exactly what they've done. And they've really prepared, I think, the foundation where they're now in a position where they've, they've got their data in the cloud, they've governed it, they've cleaned it, they've mastered it, they've cataloged it so they know what they've got. And they're in a great position for whatever the AI use cases are that are going to come. Yep, yep. And it's quite interesting because I think companies who do that work now, they modernize, they get the foundation of data right. They're going to be uh -huh. a, a huge advantage in a, in a year or two whenever we see really um, game-changing outcomes proliferating. Anybody who doesn't do that work, uh, conversely, is going to be a couple of years behind. So I think it really is imperative that people do that work now. It has become urgent. It has become costly. And there really is never a better time to do it than right now. Very true. I agree 100%. And when you're kind of talking about, you know, seven, almost close to 70%, automation that they've done the healthcare that you kind of talk, the healthcare company that you're talking about the provider uh almost 30 percent reduction in overall migration effort it is massive for sure and also uh you know the weeks of work is now done in days that is again something which i feel is game changer uh so that's amazing uh richard Another quick question for you is, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, a lot of companies would be thinking about this. Uh, if they ever want to partner with uh, Informatica, what's like the process? Is it like uh, they have to reach out or they have to fill a form? Or uh, is there like a criteria that needs to fit in or for, for this sort of joint story? Uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure a lot of companies, you get this question often, so yeah. Yes. Do you know, um, we've had a huge pickup in the number of people wanting to partner with us. Um, it's been very noticeable in the last last few months. And the process yep. is very simple. Um, on our website, we have a form. People can fill in the form. That's their application. Uh, that kicks off a sort of back-end process where we do a lot of background checks. And then one nice. of the key things we look at when a partner comes on board is making sure they, they get skilled. For us, that's absolutely critical because what we want our partners to do is to support our customers, get them into production, get them a good business outcome so that firstly, they're happy. And secondly, we want them to renew, of course. So we, we focus heavily on skills in our partner portal. All new partners get access to it. All of the training nice. is uh, free of charge. So we've made it very, very easy for partners. They get all the training for free. And uh, cool. that's the first thing. First order of business is to get skilled up. And the good news is many partners come to us with some very good skills already, and then we kind of help them to get to the next level. That's awesome. Uh, pretty straightforward uh, and pretty easy and at the same time, very robust. Uh, Richard, this was fantastic. You shared some amazing insights uh, and thanks for doing that. Uh, one last question for you is if people want to reach out to you, connect with you, which is the best platform to connect? Is LinkedIn a good platform X? Where, where do you think? Uh, yes, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So yeah, please send me a message on LinkedIn. Connect with me. would love to hear from you. Yeah, that's the best place. Awesome. This is great, Richard. Uh, thanks for, you know, obviously sharing all the insights and getting on the call and, you know, uh, sharing how the partnership looks like, uh, how, how are you all, you know, partnering with companies. We'll definitely keep the conversation going, but, and definitely looking for a 2.0 session very soon. But uh, again, thanks for visiting the Robert show. I hope you enjoyed your debut. We'll keep the conversation going. I did. Would love to come back anytime, Robert. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, feel free to reach out to Richard on LinkedIn. All right. Thank you, everyone.